I welcome to this part. We are looking at real questions. There is a link in the description. You can join and become Cloud Kernel or Cloud Ninja member. So this channel, no other channel explains the details of questions and answers the way we do. So there are 700 plus videos on cloud certifications. Let's look at this question now. Which AWS services can a company use to host and run MySQL database? Okay. So if you see DynamoDB is a NoSQL. See MySQL means it is SQL based. DynamoDB is NoSQL based. So NoSQL based will it will not work. So it is simple. And uh, other cool fact is applications like uber use dynamodb type of databases high performance database which has consumed viagra see here we are talking about database so how come s3 which is a cloud object store fit in it will not fit in see s3 you can keep objects you can keep your files images videos if we talk about MQ, MQ is a message queuing service, like a message broker with real time integrations. We use it. For example, sensors are sending some real time data. So we use it that time. Here, uh, MQ will not help you with storage of data. It will just store messages, 100 messages, 200 messages, and it will keep sending to the target. So these are our two answers. RDS is relational database. The name itself, the full form is relational database service RDS. So you can fire SQL queries. It supports MySQL, Postgres, Maria database, Oracle SQL Server. And then MySQL database, you can also put all EC2 instances. So what is the difference? RDS is fully managed. You don't have to worry about installation and other things. On EC2, you can take MySQL licenses and software and install it yourself. So this is our final answer. So this this is the YouTube handle of this channel. 700 plus videos, 3000 plus questions. So do not miss the opportunity to get certified. Now this question is about IAM best practice. So IAM is related to identity and access management. So suppose you have EC2 instance and you want to give access. So you can use IAM to give that access. Now they are saying what is the best practice? The best practice in this overall scheme of things is use MFA. Suppose you have a bank account in India. I don't know about US, at least in India, this is how it works. You have your credentials, which is comprising of username, password. Once you log in, you will be given an OTP on your mobile phone. You will have to enter that number. After that also, when you are making a high value transaction or you are transferring funds to some other account, it will uh, kind of, ask you the number behind your debit card like there is a grid with alphabets a to something a to g or something of that sort or h and each alphabet has a number written in the grid you have to enter that so that is multiple factor authentication here there are like three factors so this you should best practice is always use MFA. See, username and password, somebody knows it, suppose hack your system and they come to know. But if you get an OTP on a mobile phone and when you are making a high value transaction, even if somebody takes your mobile phone, they, you would be asked for to give the debit card details, the details behind the back of the debit card. So it is not easy to hack the entire system. MFA is recommended. See, root account access keys, no? never use. 
this is against best practice okay then b says grant broad permissions so like if broad means you enter a building you just need access to ground floor but the security says hey you know what uh you are rahul baba let me give you access to all the floors that is broad access that means even though you have work in ground floor we will give you access to all the floors they are generous people okay so from a security standpoint this is against best practice security best practice suggests you should get access only for what you require if you just want to go to ground floor we will give you access only to ground floor d says avoid rotating credentials to prevent issues see you should rotate credentials frequently this is such a false statement that you should avoid no boss you should keep rotating your credentials so that if somebody hacks your credentials you rotate it like for example your passwords you keep changing it every 3 months that way the chances of your bank account getting hacked is very less this is the final answer see in this question now you want to optimize cost and performance both so what should you do which service should you use so if we look at quick sight see it is a reporting tool you can create such cool looking dashboards it it will not help you with cost optimization okay similarly budgets budgets will not help you with performance optimization so budgets are about cost it's like you kind of like at your home what happens first of every month you set a budget you are saying that okay utilities i spend this much food i spend this much Mo movies i will spend this much uh, movies like Ad adi purush where the dialogue some of the dialogues are poorly written but i will still watch and i will spend money on popcorn and coke and so on so i'll spend this much that is a budget and usually what we try to do is we keep uh, we try to stick to the budget but in this question see it is not only cost it is also about performance budgets will not help you with performance so that is why budgets is wrong now if you see um, organizations organization is about it helps you with account management okay so that means it lets you consolidate multiple aws accounts within organizations you can create accounts members so it is about managing your accounts so you can manage your environment at scale that is what it does for you and this is how it works you can create an account add accounts group accounts apply policies enable services so it does not fit in now trusted advisor this is born for this purpose it will help you with cost optimization it will help you improve performance okay so you see these ai prompts this is an addition that comes with chrome and you can use it okay and it advisor also helps you with security so cost performance security cost performance security what else see the cost optimization performance security fault tolerance service limits all five this would be the final answer <clears throat> okay so now you have a company and this company needs data warehouse and analytical workloads and it should support sql queries the moment i see data warehouse i always think about a service called redshift so this is redshift it helps you create databases it's not database it's a data warehouse simple it is not a database it is a data warehouse okay one so you can fire sql queries it has familiar familiarity with sql you can fire sql queries so this is the answer rds is just a database it will not help you with data warehouse even though it you can it supports sql queries it will not help and then we are talking about athena athena is you can analyze a lots of data with ease and flexibility using athena it supports sql as well as python it is based on open source trino and presto engines basically it is not a database it is not a data warehouse as well and then we have emr emr the moment you see emr emr is about big data big data so 
so you can run and scale apache spark high express 2 and other big data workloads it's all about big data our question is not talking about big data it is talking about data warehouse so if that is the case why we would choose emr so this would be our final answer this is the youtube handle 700 plus videos 3000 plus questions on various aws certifications azure certifications snowflake google cloud tableau click and so on everything is linked with the cloud journey so which aws service you should use to run um your company's on-premises data center which solution provides the ability for a company to run aws services in company so that means what is the aws service for example ec2 for example rds okay so it is common sense this will run on aws but you want to make it run on premises you have a hybrid structure hybrid means what hybrid means on premises plus cloud on premises plus aws cloud on premises plus aws cloud some services are in on premises some are in aws cloud now you want things which are there in aws cloud you want those to run on premises if you want that to happen use outpost family you can run AWS infrastructure and services on premises for a truly hybrid experience. And with this, I will also let you know when the journey of cloud started and the market started, you know, gained attraction 2018 onwards. People were saying, hey, everything should go on cloud. But later they started realizing that everything, if you push on cloud, you would go bankrupt. It will cost you so much to maintain your services. Then they say, hey, hey, hey you know what? uh what about using another cloud which is cheaper and etc like oracle cloud is cheaper then they came with the concept hey multi-cloud so the cheaper stuff not so important stuff we will keep in oracle cloud the important stuff high performance stuff we will keep it on aws then they told okay boss this is also costly can we still use high uh still use on premises and they came with the approach called hybrid approach now, since the hybrid approach came, AWS also, AWS in 2016 onwards, they were saying, boss, move everything to my environment. Now, AWS says, boss, up to you. You want to move here, we are fine. You want to play a hybrid, we still have outpost, which will help you with that. Okay. You see how the truth, the reality changes year after year. Okay. Now, see, direct connect. If you have your own data center of uh, on premises and you want to connect to AWS using your dedicated line so that nobody else can use it, then you use direct connect. Direct connect is very costly. It is like, you know, instead of having one wife, having five wives, it is very costly even. Now storage gateway is about, you know, you have, what happens in storage gateway, you have this gateway, which will help you store the objects from your on premises to AWS cloud S3 buckets. So that way you can make use of your cloud storage options storage gateways useful that way so on-premises applications will get access to virtually unlimited cloud storage so if you are just on on-premises and you want unlimited storage it will not happen right it will not happen because things are finite but with cloud things are infinite so if you want that you plug a uh, storage gateway between on-premises and cloud and start using infinite storage of aws cloud in the business world, this is called leverage. What it means is, if you don't have the contact, but your friend has a contact, use your friend's contact to still become rich. A lot of startups and entrepreneurs do that. Now, let us look at C, systems manager hybrid activations. Okay, so what is the system manager useful for? See, it is just a manager. You can automate your repetitive tasks. Whatever you want to automate, you can do. You can create playbooks, run it, schedule it. It will get automated. So what is the use case? For example, you want to automate your patch installations and upgrades. You can handle it through systems manager. There was a question in the past that we have addressed in this scenario where you want to automate the patch installation and patch upgrades and there you make use of systems manager. Here, you know, do not require that. Here, what is required is a very different thing. So that's why C is wrong. So this would be our final answer. So if you have not yet subscribed, do so. It will help you with your cloud journey. If you are serious about clearing your cloud certifications 
and gaining adding this weight to your cv otherwise do not subscribe to this channel you can go to different channel where they explain how they move from 3 lakhs to 45 lakhs in just two years okay and just waste your time simple so hard work man because only hard work will help you succeed and gain that level so this is a channel which will help you uh, shape up that future this brings us to the end of this part there are 700 plus videos on this channel make use of that 3000 plus questions and do not forget to click the join button below this video or there is a link in the description become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member and gain access to the paid content like i always say aws cloud practitioner certification is just the first step okay it's just the first step. and mind you it is a baby step if you have cleared this certification and you are stopping your cloud journey believe me there is no respect for this certification i have been leading such programs at a leadership level we do not we, do, we treat these guys who are cloud practitioner certified with as amateur in the cloud world okay so mind you make sure that you go to the intermediate and then to the advanced but at least to the intermediate level do not stop your journey here in the cloud practitioner certification okay i hope you have understood the concepts how we are attacking the questions and options and arriving at the right answers keep focusing on the concepts because only the concepts would help you clear the certifications see you in the next part